Hey guys, here's Tim. A uh, big reminder for all, so spread it out via links, Discord, just share it please. Um, it's now called Tim J Design because I want mainly focus on the 3D and CG stuff. That's pretty cool, but I want also provide you with some other content. So, for example, photography will come soon and other design areas. So the links are all updated in the description. So for example my homepage, Instagram, Patreon, CG Circuits, uh, ArtStation and so on. And for now the new tutorial will be about these irregular spider webs. So I went out and I did make some pictures some macro shots, nothing special, just for reference and we will create something like that in the tutorial. So have fun in the tutorial and let's get started. First of all it's pretty simple, that's a cool thing. <laughs> so let's get here an empty ge geometry container and let's call this maybe a non non underscore uniform underscore web. Let's color it black and give it a round shape. Let's dive inside with double click and let's get the overall shape. We can deal with that later but for now let's get the overall shape. It will be a later procedural so that's the good thing. We can change the shape Let's get a sphere here. So first of all we will deal with the with the lines. We will get a sphere here and make it a, a polygon here. Let's get a scatter to scatter some points onto the geometry, maybe 25 points. Let's get rid of the origin stuff here. So let's hit D on your keyboard, go to guides and disable the origin gnomon. So let's make a point a little bit bigger. So let's hit D again, go under geometry and dial up the point size here a little bit. Let's visualize the point number. So we got 25 points here. Also in the geometry spreadsheet 0 to 25. Let's place down a copy the points because we want to copy the same sphere onto the points and we will get something like this. So the sphere we've copied on our points is way too large. So let's get an attribute randomize. So we don't want to randomize the color. So let's name this getter on surface. Let's call this rand p scale. So we will um, we will randomize the p scale. So the scale of the spheres. So let's hit p scale scale, and let's get inside the uh, attribute randomize. Under attribute name cd is the color, and we don't want to randomize the color here. It's also a cool thing, but for now let's randomize the p-scale. So let's hit, let's enter here p-scale to get something like this. Let's go under the distribution, hit custom ramp and let's get this here out and let's get a minimal size of maybe 0 0.1 and the maximum size, yeah, let's play with that here a little bit to get something like this. We can also randomize it here with the global seed. So that's pretty cool. And now we need more points. So let's get again the scatter here. So you can alt drag the nodes out and copy them. Or you can just hit um, control C, control uh, V to copy and paste. So let's connect this here and we will get some more points. So let's dial up the point size to 3 
and let's get maybe 2500 points here. So now comes the pretty simple and cool part about this. Let's get and connect adjacent pieces here. So we will connect the single points here with polylines. And let's get the search radius maybe a little bit higher. Something like something like that. Let's dial up 15 points in here to get something like this. Let's play a little bit with the values and let's play a little bit with the values here. Let's get the radius down again. 17, something like that. And let's place down a resample. So we will resample the curve and we will give the curve some more s uh, points. So maybe 0 0.01. And now place down a fuse node. While a fuse node, um, with a fuse node you will get some irregularity um, to the shape. So let's hit here 0 0.025. And you can already see you will get, without a fuse node and with the fuse node, you will get these cool connections here. Let's place a smooth here. And let's make this 50. Let's dial the filter quality down to 1. And you can already see we will get a cool shape here. And let's get a next maybe 500. And j that's just basically it. So you will get these cool shapes here. And of course now that looks pretty, nah, not so good. So let's place down at first a null here. Call it out web. So let's experiment a little bit. Let's get five here <laughs> so you get something like this. Let's get let's get twenty five but make the sphere larger. That's pretty cool. So now you can Let's disable the relax iterations. That makes a whole lot of difference. So now we will get some really cool shapes here. So disable the relax iterations and now you can also play with the seat here and with the seat here above. And you can for example get, an get a material here. So let's apply the material above. Let's just for now play a little bit with this kind of form here. Let's get in platonic. And platonic solid. So let's get it in here and you can see it's now on the tetrahedron. Let's get an let's get a isocahedron. And you can really see how that affects uh, the overall shape. So when you get a box, you will get something like more boxier look. And it's, that's not bad. That's not bad. Let's get here 500. Let's dial it slowly up. Let's make 5000 here. Let's go back to 2500. That's a pretty good value, I think. Okay, let's get a quick random rotation on here. So, attribute randomize. Let's call this rand rot for rotation. And the quickest way to rotate the geometry from the copy to points is with the n. So, we will give an n the normal to the points and the copied geometry with the copy to points node will align to the normal axis and let's get this 
here inside a sphere and we'll get a random rotation play with the seed a little bit and you can see this is with the random rotation node and this is without so we will get some random rotation here that looks pretty good let's get here a dark background so we can see this better so let's get a quick redshift setup let's make our art stone light let's get a quick simple HDRI map in here let's disable the background let's have a look let's create a camera let's make it also a macro look so these pictures here are photographed with um, with a Sony lens 90 millimeters uh, 2.8 and let's get also this look or try to get it so let's make 90 millimeters to get like a macro look let's get a mm, a good position for the camera here or try to find a good position let's get something like this let's get the resolution up here copy the focus distance so copy parameter enable the DOF so the depth of field and let's paste the focus distance so paste relative reference let's get out of the camera yeah, it's also a pretty good focus point here let's get a shop network let's call this redshift redshift and there we will create a simple material and let's get a rob network rob network and this network will call out let's also call it red let's dive inside place a in redshift Note here. Let's leave it just at the defaults for now. And let's dive up. Let's go here into the shop network. Let's place down on Redshift network and let's call this Mat Web. So Material Web. Let's go to the Geometry tab here let's go to the strands render object as strands let's disable for now the max tessellations we don't need this go to the cylinder and under render let's pick the material here so redshift material web let's dive into the camera and let's fire up redshift so guys i'm back after one crash a quick reminder don't leave the global scale multiplier at 1 your redshift will probably crash let's get an attribute wrangle here and let's make an own p scale so let's get here float at p scale equals and let's make a channel for that scale and let's make the scale 0 0.001 so pretty small scale for now let's go into the camera and have a look yeah that's way too small so let's get the global scale modifier back to 1 yeah that's nice so I just move that to the side and I will adjust the camera here a little bit yeah. 
let's get the focus point around here so we will get something like this and the depth of field is way too much so let's get down to 0 0.1 and you will end up with something like that let's dive into the redshift material and let's make a material there is material so you can play now give it some gold look <laughs> some abstract uh, look or uh, other look so but for now let's make it a little bit more realistic for today and let's get a glass shader so glass here so it's like this let's move that to the side quickly so you will get a little bit of refraction or transparency and it's maybe a little bit too much so let's change the roughness to a zero point maybe two five let's zoom in and let's make a quick rendering here let's dive some setting up refraction something like that let's get a little bit global illumination that's don't do much but let's enable it let's hit the bucket rendering let's make this a little bit bigger for you guys so here's the focus point here is the the depth area and I really like the look it's not bad so let's get into the IPR break let's get to the fixed scaling just for now and dive up, dive in and let's play a little bit with the overall seed here and you can get quickly some pretty cool structures so I think that's it for this tutorial. So play with the play with the seeds and play maybe with the with the width or in the redshift case the p scale for the thickness of the lines with the material also. And I will see you in the next video and just for now again the quick reminder all links are updated and now it's Tim J design. So I will see you in the next video.